uh, we're back with 3D printing for seniors. We're going to continue on with a uh, thing uh, that we have uh, started last time. And, and what we want to do is uh, be in a situation where we can learn a little bit each time about various processes that we need in order to uh, work with the 3D printing. To start with, uh, we're going to start a search in, in uh, thing, thing averse, and, and how we do that is at the top of the page, you'll see a, an area that talks about uh, search, and, and you type in there uh, whatever you want to search for. A lot of times I'll search for parts for my 3D printer, or I'll search for uh, a particular thing such as a pencil holder or a vase or something of that nature. Um, once you put that in there and you go through it, there, there's there's hundreds, maybe even thousands of models or or parts or objects that that you're looking for, and you just you may look through several different pages of them and decide I need to refine it a little bit. So instead of just saying you know uh, 3D parts, you might have, uh, for example. Uh, you want to have a QIDI, which is the kind of 3D printer that I use. Uh, and you might even add the X-Pro, which is the model number. And then you might add a specific part, such as a camera stand or something of that nature, uh, and, and refine yourself because you can have so many different parts. Um, when you actually find a particular part that's interested that you're interested in, uh, you can then click on that part and it will move you to the next page. And when it moves you to the next page, it usually gives you a, a series of pictures of, of various parts that may be a part of that particular model or, or object that you're going to ultimately uh, build. You look at those to see exactly what it's going to take in order for you to build that particular project. Uh, you may have one part, or you may have several parts. They may snap together, they may screw together, they may be, have to be glued together. Uh, the, the point being, however, that you, you're going to have to choose which one you want to do first. As you get into uh, 3D printing, you'll realize that you can add, say, let's say there's four small parts. The parts are maybe an inch in diameter or an inch long or maybe even a couple of inches long, but they're narrow. And, and you'll learn that you can fit those parts on one print bed and print all four of them at the same time. And if you happen to have a 3D printer that has multiple filaments, you can print each of those objects and in different filaments, different colors. So if you had loaded onto your machine, let's say, for example, a white filament and a uh, green filament, you can have half the parts in white and half the parts in green. And you'll be able to produce those at the same time that you're producing one part, you can produce four parts. Just remember, that these parts that you're, produce, that you're producing are made out of plastic. So consequently, when you're looking at what it is that you're trying to produce, you've got to think about various aspects of it. For example, if you're per, uh, doing a vase and, and it's a, a smaller version and you, and you look at the particular thickness of the walls of the vase, just remember that if it's too thin, you may be into a situation where if it's going to be a something, a vase, that something or a vase, something that you're going to put water in, uh, it may leak if it's too thin. Just remember, we are talking about layers of plastic that are coming together, melting together, you might say, and, and they could cause a void that would allow it to leak. So if you're trying to do it so that it'll contain some sort of fluid, you might want to think about the idea of making your walls much thicker uh, so that uh, it will not have any voids in it. 
sometimes when you're dealing with a particular object or model coming from Thinkiverse, Thingsiverse, Thingiverse, I always say Thingsiverse, Thingiverse, you'll find that uh, when it comes into the slicer, it's too big to be a part of uh, your 3D printer. It may be too tall or too wide. Uh, it may be much too big around. What you can do is you learn from your slicer that you can make that particular object much smaller. You can learn how you can have it fit actually to the bed. Now, there are times when you don't want to do that, especially if you've got a particular object or model that needs to be a particular size. You can't really reduce it any because otherwise it won't fit the purpose for which you want it to be there. So consequently, uh, you just have to remember that, that uh, you've got to think about all of these particular issues as you start to put something together so that you can actually ultimately produce it. The next thing is, you know, when you've got it on the bed, you've chosen the color, you've chosen how many parts you're going to produce, you're going to choose which filament color you want for each part, etc. Go ahead and print it. Don't be afraid to print it. It, it may take some time. Some of these models can take up to 17 hours or more, uh, especially if it's a smaller item that's going to only take maybe a half hour to an hour. Uh, go ahead and print it and take a look at it and see exactly what you're getting. And when you uh, finally realize that this particular item is uh, what you want, then you, you, you've got the finished product if, if it works out for you on that particular printing, or let's say you want it a little larger or perhaps a little smaller, then go back into your slicer and make the changes that you need to make. The one thing that's, that's important to remember is that I have found, uh, for example, I bought, uh, I've changed my telephone service and I'm still with Verizon, but I'm in a different company. And in order to do that, my phone that I had from my original Verizon store is not compatible with the new company. So I had to buy a new phone. When I bought a new phone, of course, I needed a case. And I'm thinking, 3D print. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can make my own case. So I, I decided, well, okay, I went into Thingiverse. I typed in, uh, I have an iPhone XR. I said, I'm going to go type in Exxon, I mean, an iPhone XR, and I'm going to say case. Well, I got 30 different cases that I looked at, different styles, different colors, different things that, that you could do. And so I found one that, that looked pretty good. And uh, I happened to have a red, which I really didn't want, which I wanted was a black. Uh, my black filament is not my favorite in terms of the quality that it produces. So I wanted to try it first in something else. So I went ahead and printed the red case. Well, when it came out, it came out absolutely gorgeous. It was just beautiful. The problem was the case was too hard. And it, my phone wouldn't fit in the case because it fit nice and snug around the phone. I just couldn't move the edges with the PLA filament that I was using to fit my phone. So I'm going, wow, what am I going to do now? Well, I, I did some research and realized that, that there's a, a different type of filament that is more flexible. It's, I believe, a TUG. So I ordered it. And I got it here and I loaded it onto my machine. I had black on the left side and I had left my white on the right side and decided to go ahead and produce the part. It was specifically set up for an iPhone XR, so I figured it would fit. And sure enough, it came out, it came out just beautiful in terms 
of the size. And because it was a flexible material, it fit around the phone just fine. But because it was so flexible and I had never used it before, I didn't have the fill just right and I didn't have it just the way I wanted to. So it was really a rough surface. It just, it just didn't look good. And it was so flexible that it basically fell off the phone when I went to put it on. So the point being, sometimes it's going to take a while to produce a particular model that you want to produce. And it may take a couple, you know, several different printings in order for you to get what it is that you want as far as quality and other aspects. Well, I think that's going to be enough for today. Uh, we will see you again shortly. In the meantime, happy 3D printing. And you seniors, don't be bored. Go do something. See you later.